All right, so I'm making this video to quickly demonstrate the merge capabilities because uh, it was too hard to try to capture all the distinct aspects of it. Uh, so basically, if we make a branch from uh, the trunk and we use Subversion, then that branch will keep track, or, or Subversion will keep track of the revision that the branch was based off of. So we have three different scenarios we have to be worried about. One is we made a change in the branch, but not in the trunk. One is we made a change in the trunk and not in a branch. And then the last one is that both the branch and the trunk touch the same file. In that case, we'll have to do something different. So what I'm going to do is show you a very small project where I demonstrate these three things so it's easier to see and then you can quickly apply it to the larger scale. So the important thing here is uh, in, in the last communique I had, I talked about how you really need to check out the entire branch of everything, not just the individual projects, because it's easier to control the merging from a root level, a higher level of everything. Um, so what I've done here is I've set up two projects, a trunk, that contains project one and project two with some just gibberish files in it that will make some stuff in it. And then I have a duplicate that I made, a, a revision 100 that is a branch that I based off of this trunk. So if you look right now, it's got project one, project two, it's got the exact same files, uh, except this file, which is a new file to the branch. So I, as I comment here, new file to branch. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is make a, make us a, a couple of changes to reflect some of the things we just talked about. So obviously this reflects a change to the branch, but let me also just touch a file that both have that only this one has. So let's edit that and just put some change in it, right? So change made in branch. And we'll save that and so that'll reflect that aspect from a branch and then we need to let's pick one file that we're going to make both the branch and the trunk will make changes to so I'll do this one so I'll say change made in branch okay so I check those in I commit them to this repository and I'll say, you know, whatever, changes to branch. And they're checked in. Oh, there will be certainly. Okay, so this one I said we were going to make change to in the trunk as well. So let's, but let's make that change down here. Maybe it was a separate change. So change made in trunk no conflict and maybe in this one up here we might make a change made in trunk possible conflict all right so we're going to change that file and you know let's also create a new project so let's create a brand new project called project 3 and under project three, we'll create a new file called project3.txt. And we'll just put some gibberish in it. Okay. And so that's a new project that didn't exist, doesn't exist in the branch. And uh, let's make a change to a file that is not being touched in the branch. So let's take like this one for example. And this is trunk change to file. All right, so now I have to commit all those too. They have to, everything has to be committed. Cancel, 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 cancel. Crap, uh, I just lost my change, didn't I? Ready, ready. Okay, change made to trunk. 
not in range. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so I'm going to commit. You have to be careful. Trunk changes. Ah, why did I do that? So now I am at a stable point. The trunk's been updated, the branch has been updated, and I need to merge. I'd like to merge the trunk, current changes in the trunk, into the branch. So what you do is, in the which, whichever workspace you set up your branch, you click on the branch at the highest level, and we're going to say Team Merge. And you want to select the first option here. The other options are good for some other things, but this is the first option. The concept here is that I'm going to take revisions from one branch or trunk of a tree and put them into another one. So the one I started from is the one I'm moving things to. That's why I said select the branch to move stuff from the trunk to. Uh, this here makes just makes sure that you've done updates beforehand. So that's all it does is updates and commits. Uh, it's probably good practice to do it just in case there might be changes. So as you can see here, it says, hey, something might be out of whack. So you just tell it to quickly update um, the specific file. And so it's all good now. All right, so now we're going to... Um, we're telling it we're coming from the trunk. So we're saying, I want to take changes from the trunk and put them into the branch. Now you could just have it automatically do it. Like it'll look and say, oh, look, every revision that's been made since the last merge or from, the, or from when the trunk was made, or you can select the ones you want. This is a nice way to actually see what's, what's being considered. We can look at this and then go back and just let it do it on its own. But so you can see here, um, the only thing from the trunk that it's going to look at are the trunk changes, uh, which is nice, right? So, so obviously, you know, in this case, we could have just said all. So I'm going to do that. Now here's the here's the tricky part, right? So this is what how do you handle conflicts? So what we're going to want to tell it is prompt me for each conflict, uh, and for text file specifically, binary files, you know. You have to determine how you want to handle those property files, same things. Uh, and then down here under merge options, um, you just want to say working copy. You only want to look at the working copy. So we hit, we hit the finish. And what it's going to do is it's going to automatically figure out if there's a change or not a change and push it into the branch. And so we had one file that we touched in both the branch and the um, trunk, and that's this one. So it came up and it said, hey, you've got a conflict. What do you want to do? Well, you can either mark it and deal with it later, which isn't a good idea, or one of these other options. Or if you know that one is just absolutely better than the other, you can say, hey, take this one over that one or that one over this one. But we're going to take, say, launch the graphical conflict resolution editor and so what it did was it brought up, so this stays open because we're not done yet. So it brought up the graphical resolution editor. Let me maximize this. And squeeze this a little bit. So it'll go through and you can see here like, oh look, we have an obvious uh, error here. I can't figure out how to resolve this. Which one should I take? Well, you have to, you have, to have knowledge obviously of what's going on, whether the person making the branch is supposed to make the change or whether this was made here. So let's, in, in this situation, let's say the branch is the right one. So you just simply um, ignore this one. And down here's the other change. Well, okay, this was a change that has no conflict. So we'll just tell it to pull it over. And now we'll say save. And by saving and closing this, it's going to ask me then, hey, was everything resolved? And you say, yes, I have merged. So mark this as resolved and move on to the next issue. And so you can see it goes back to processing the next file. And when it's all done, it, it will be finished. And we can, we can take a look here in a second. 
so it's still processing. And it's giving me an overall. So it tells me, hey, I updated three files. There were two new files added. Or you know, in this case, we knew project three, project three text would be added. Uh, and we had one conflict that was resolved. Um, the property statistics, there's an update to the properties because it keeps track of which revisions have been added to the last uh, thing. I'll show them to you here in a second. So we close that. Now you look, and you can see here, look, it added... It merged in Project 3, Project 3. Uh, it touched all the different things that, you know, we had issues with, right? I mean, this one had trunk change to file, trunk change to file, uh, not in a branch. And then this one was the one that we, we had to deal with, uh, the conflict resolution here. So basically now what you do is you commit your changes here because you've resolved everything so you can say hey merged you know with trunk and it checks it in as soon as it's checked in okay so now it's been merged with the trunk and one of the ways I know that is if I right click and I go to team show revision property or show properties you can see right here it says that this is merge information so this thing is merged with the trunk all the way from 1556 to 1569 1569 was the specific revision here for the trunk only changes so it's it's merged all the way up to that. So the next time you merge, it won't even look at those. It'll say, oh, I've already touched those revisions. I don't have to look at them again. Only new ones will be considered. That's how easy it is. That's that's all you have to do. Obviously, it's a lot longer. It's a bit bigger process because there's more files for it to compare. But the key is to make sure you do it from the lowest level. So that's why I had you check out the branch at EFT. When you go to do the reverse and we're ready to roll this back into the branch back into the trunk, we're going to want to check the trunk out at its lowest level and do it that way. Otherwise, it's not going to work right. So, And uh, that's the whole thing. So that should resolve everything. And if you have any questions, let me know.